Generation will begin in... And now we're in Junpei Vision. 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Holy shit. And I knew what it was going to say, but that is one hell of a creepy voice. I knew it! Uh, it's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years! What the hell? What the hell? What in God's name are you talking about? It's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiments! You aren't making any sense! Oh uh, yeah, she hasn't been around for like all of the exposition. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise, I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... Incineration will begin in 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn! Uh, what kind of idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well, god damn it! Okay, okay, fine! I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out. What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing! How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button. There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that. Can't really blame her. Wait. The floor. It's moving. What else can I say about it, but... What the hell is that? What else could I say? Her sad face looks like someone hauled off and slapped the shit out of her. Eh, yeah, it kind of does. The floor opened and a machine rose up out of it. It looked like a computer. At least it kind of did. There was a monitor, a keyboard, and a cross-shaped device of some kind. Something about the machine scared me, but I forced myself to walk up to it was terrified. Tears poured down my face. I wiped them off, even as more took their place, and I forced myself forward. Finally, I reached it. I looked at the screen. It was blank. All I saw was my own frightened face staring back at me from the glass, drenched in tears. All I can see on the screen is a reflection of my own face. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy, but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay, Junpei, just calm down, all right? Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Man, I wish that thing would just shut up. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. All right, back to this thing. It's only showing up now, then it's got to be important. But what the hell am I supposed to do with it? Yeah. Uh. Hey, move! Yeah. Hey, we're all tense, lady. That doesn't mean you get to shove people around. Okay, it's turned on. There's nothing on the screen, though. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Sure, I'll just push buttons. I'm sure that'll... <laughs> Huh. Well, at least it's on now. It's on the screen, though. What is this? What's up? It looks like some sort of puzzle. It's got a bunch of numbers and letters scattered across a 5x5 five five grid. The numbers range from 1 to 8. My steampunk PC is Energy Star compliant. <laughs> Do you think that if we solve this puzzle, the incinerator will stop? Yeah, 
Well, we can help, right? All right, puzzle. How do you work? Oh, man, that goddamn voice again. Incineration will begin in 13 minutes. Shit, 13 minutes. Can we really do this? My heart feels like it's gonna pop. My heart was pounding like it was about to explode. I stared at the puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but I had no idea how. My connection to Jumpy had been gone for a while. His mind was gone. I couldn't get any more information from him. I felt the seconds tick by as I stared at the screen, completely lost. My cheeks felt hot as tears poured over them. Then I heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Pressed against the window in the entry door was a face. A frightening, evil face. It was Hongo. How long have you been watching me? Oh, don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still muffled. It's simple, really. But I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> His laughter was muffled by the door, but still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster. I bit my lip and glared at Hongo, struggling to hold back hot tears. You're a terrible person! I hate you! Oh my... How could you call a gentleman such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. Yeah, you did. You fucking threw her back in here, you dumb shit. You see? I've even left you a way out. <gasps> a way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that, and you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stopping it? You only capture me and make me do this all again! I'm not going to listen to you! If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now! God damn, Akane. My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you, I'm a fair man! Huh? If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will in turn activate. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape. Dude, your experiment has already flawed by the fact that you now have ten people going through a door as supposed to nine. You have done fucked yourself over in so many amoral ways that the completion of the experiment will not even fucking matter by the time this shit is through. The verification function of the red? Then I remembered. Before Hongo left the room, he had scanned two bracelets into the red. Ah, so you do remember. Right now there are two numbers in the red. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? I looked down at my left hand. The face on my bracelet showed a five. One plus three plus five equals nine. I ran to the door with the nine on it. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner pen. You really aren't one for listening, are you? I hear Hungo's muffled voice from across the room. I've already told you, didn't I? Once you've solved the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of fool are you? You could never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. Well, you are more ter- You are extremely terrifying if that's- Well, that's what I was going to say there again. That makes him even worse! Huh? If all you think of people is as monkeys, you're even fucking worse than they are! Now start the experiment! Solve the puzzle! 
Of course you don't. Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find the solution. I can't! Then you'll die. You'll burn alive. <laughs> it's going to be quite hot in there in a few minutes. How is it getting even more fucking insane as time passes? Like, literally. I thought the safe ending was, like, fucking insane. No, he's managed to just, like, jump. I am fucked the levels. I imagine it will be very painful. <laughs> <laughs> this horrible laugh echoed across the room. Even after his face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. Incineration will begin in 10 minutes. I was crying, great gulping sobs broken by hiccups that shook my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me like a tremendous weight. Somehow I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to the device. I stared at the monitor. I can't! I just can't! There's no... there's no way! I can't figure this out! What was I going to do? I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm imagining that entire exchange with Ace being played by Mark Hamill in Joker mode. And that doesn't seem too far off, either. I didn't even know where to start. Fear scattered my thoughts, and all I could think of was how I was going to die. My palms were sweating, and my blood was boiling in my veins. It was hot. So hot. I couldn't breathe. I felt dizzy. My heart roared in my chest as if it would pound itself to pieces. I reached into my pocket. I wrapped my ham around the thing I'd come back to get. The doll Jumpy had given me. At least I had that. I held it tight with both hands and prayed. Help me! Jumpy! Help me! Help me! Help me! Jumpy! Jumpy! Akane? Akane? Who the hell is Akane? Shut up! Just shut the hell up! Seven and Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea, though. Clover's looking at me. I think Snake may have figured it out. No, it doesn't matter. They're in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here. Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Say something! Fuck! Did something break our connection? I swear I just heard her. Shit! Akane! Answer me! Akane! Jumpy! I spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. I looked around. He wasn't in the room, of course. But I'd heard it so clearly. Like he was right there. Jumpy! I screamed loud as, as loud as I could. Akane! Jumpy! That's her. She's there. Then that means... Akane! I apologize for the going back and forth. I'll probably have to put like some sort of warning when I try to put this on YouTube because that's a lot of flashing for the TV thing. Akane! Akane, are you in an incinerator right now? Yes, I am! How? How did you know? I couldn't believe that he knew that. Now I understand what Santa meant. Right. There's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. I think I get it now. Incineration will begin in... 7 
minutes. Chubby, we don't have time! As quickly as I could, I told him that I had to solve the puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Got it! And I do. We get everything now. At last, I finally understand what all of this means. I know why the Nonary game was held today. I know why we were kidnapped and brought here. It's all for this moment. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god. This is... This is insane! I, I, I can't believe it, but there's only one possible answer. June is... Zero is... Akane Kuroshiki. She recreated the history of the future that she had a glimpse of nine years ago. She tried to save herself that way nine years ago. No, she's trying to save herself right now. That means that there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan, I will save her. I will save Kane Kurashiki. I must save her. No matter what. Incineration will begin in six minutes. The voice reminded me of how much time I had left. Jumpy! Yeah, I know. Just hang on, all right? I promise I'll get you out of there. I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, all right? Just give me a few minutes, okay? Okay. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. It felt like my heart was on fire. Six minutes or not, my heart burned with my feelings for him. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey indeed! This is more wibbly wobbly than an episode of Doctor Who can be. Seriously, at this point. You ta well, no. No, no, technically Doomsday combined all of them kinda into one, and yeah. The whole bad wolf incident. Alright. Time to get to work, Junpei. Snake talking to them about something? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Get out of my way. Hey, what are you... Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus. I didn't mean to snap, but there's a lot more at stake here than your pride. I'll apologize later, alright? Well, let's have a look at this thing. Got numbers all over this grid. I think the panels are out of order. So I just need to switch these out? Staring at it isn't going to accomplish anything. Just have to try it. Ah, <sighs> just think of what I did all those times before. I'm going to do this on my own, with my own mind. I'm going to solve this problem. Here we go. Final puzzle. I think I get what this is, but yeah. So let's see. So that goes there. Oh, this is actually really easy. I get why, but yeah. Please enter password. Oh no. Wait. No, I have no idea. No, that's not it. No. What is it? password now then? Is there any hints? What the hell am I supposed to put here? No, 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 no,
the password is password. I hope it fucking is. No, it's not. after I solved the last puzzle. Maybe the hint was in that one. Oh no. No, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. Fuck, 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 fuck! I didn't realize! We're one through, okay, one through eight, one through eight. ended up being password and afterward after it was an extra space the ninth square maybe that's the password yes that's it Akane did you get it Yes, I did! I solved it! I mean, really, you solved it for me, but I copied everything you did! Of course. Now I get it. Now I get it. The password puzzle contained the numbers 1 through 8. Only nine was missing. Now I just have to press enter. Then what the hell are you waiting for? Now push it! Okay, I will. I hit the enter key. Emergency shutdown. down out to him but they were a very different sort of tears a wonderful feeling of accomplishment and relief flooded my body <laughs> yay no Bernay Akane yes at the same time what strength I'd have left disappeared and I collapsed to the floor for a while I just lay there laughing and crying and enjoying being alive every time I thought about him I thought my heart would burst I can't quite believe I did that. But I am so glad. So glad. I... I feel like my heart's on fire. No. 
I don't have time to be thinking about that kind of shit. I need to tell Akane. Akane! Sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Oh, of course! That's fine! I wiped the tears from my eyes and nodded vigorously, even though I knew he couldn't see me. Then I looked over at the corner of the floor. There were the two bracelets Hongo had left behind. Now. Well, Seven and Lotus don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice look to give someone who just saved your life, guys. Junpei, are you... Okay? Ah, shut it. Right, okay, so maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. So what if I haven't pressed the enter key yet? All right, nothing will be back now. Here goes. Wait. Incineration will begin in... 90 seconds. It doesn't sound like it's stopping. What the shit? Why isn't it stopping? Oh, no. Okay, maybe I didn't hit the key hard enough. Just hit it again. 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 Maybe that's not working either. The alarm's still going off. What the hell is going on? Got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect. So why the fuck isn't this thing stopping? Incineration will begin in 60 seconds. Wait, of course. That's what the numbers that showed up after the puzzle mean. Two plus four plus five plus seven is eight. Snake, Clover, me, seven, and Lotus. Then, door nine. No, that's it. That number on the door isn't a nine. It's not even a number. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that... Holy shit. Of course. Then we just have to put the right number into the red and... Incineration will begin in 30 seconds. Run, guys! Get to the door! Run! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! Don't have much time! Man, I sure hope they can just trust me on this one or we are all fucked! All right, no time to explain, just go. Quick, verify your numbers on the red. Verify? Who? What combination? All of us, we all need to verify. Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it. Hurry, 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 hurry. Incineration will begin in 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two. Central gate has been opened. Incineration system has been disabled. Oh, thank fucking Christ. No, no time to be happy. Time to go! <laughs> Hurry! We've only got nine seconds before the door closes. Go, go, go! Come on, guys, move it! They're all through. Move it, Junpei! Just in time. And there goes the door. No, don't calm down yet. You're not done. We've still got to find the dead. Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> Man, that sure guy sure can laugh when he wants to. Looks like Clover and Lotus are totally out of energy. Snake is shaking his head wearily. I just want to take a nap, but... Akane? Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! I want to tell her we made it. I want to tell her how good I feel. But... Nothing. The 
The door opened. Standing in front of it was my brother. Akane! Oi! I cried his name, even though my voice was almost gone from screaming, and leapt into his arms. Oh, Aoi! <gasps> Akane! I buried my face in his chest and cried again. I cried and cried and cried. The steady thump of his heart in my ear made me feel like I was home. His feet was almost like a lullaby. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and held him tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. I hadn't felt the warmth of another human body in what seemed like an eternity. I just wanted to stay there in his arms forever. But I couldn't. The moment I'd passed through the door, my bracelets had begun to count down to death. I leapt away from it and looked around. The door had already closed. I spotted the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get to and scan all the bracelets. I left the ones Hongo had dropped on the scanner pen. That was it. a deep breath and looked around again. The huge detective who we called Seven in nine years and Snake, the blind boy, were looking at me. They seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide and their mouths hung open. Alright, let's get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. Oh, you were so Okay, yeah, I was wondering about that. I was waiting to see if the game had... I was gonna do that, but I didn't think it would, but yeah, it... It was, it was close. The boy was right. It was time we got moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar Seven and Snake out of their surprise, and they nodded. We took off running, up the spiraling stairs to freedom. Time for more running. So they can get us out of here. No wonder we're running so hard. My heart's beating so hard I can barely feel it. God, I can't wait to breathe the real air again. Huh? Seven talking? Hey Junpei, can I ask you something? <sighs> What's up? That door, the one with the nine on it. Why did it open? Yeah, all five of us verified our numbers on the red. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight is twenty-six. That makes our digital root eight. It shouldn't have opened. <laughs> That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Why? Because you were the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? Yeah. What are the two numbers in base two? Zero and one. How about base ten? That goes from zero to nine, right? Then how about base sixteen? Zero through F. After 9, it starts at A and goes from there. B, C, D, etc. You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and so on. So, what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? What if you go way past base 16 all the way to base 27? Base 27? Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are the same. So, I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16. H is 17, I is 18, J is 19. K is 20, L is 21, M is 22. N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and? What comes after that? Uh. Hmm. Oh. Q. 26. And what does that mean? That wasn't a nine on the door. It was a Q. A fucking lowercase Q. Yep, that's pretty much it. I guess to put it another way, you could say that it was a nine in base 10, but a Q in base 27. That's actually clever. I thought the Q was going to be a bullshit thing, but, uh, no. No, that that's actually clever. Time for more.
more running. God, my thighs are killing me. I swear, any moment now I'm gonna tear a muscle. I feel like every single cell on my body is dying for hair. Damn, every breath I take is a chore now. I feel like my lungs are gonna burst. Just a short rest. No, can't stop. Don't have time. Come on, legs. There can't be many more of these steps left. Let's run. Run. Run like a bullet down a rifle barrel. Like a tornado cutting through a sea of clouds. I feel like we're running along the back of a giant coiled dragon. Finally. <laughs> I'm still in a dream, snake eater. <laughs> I can barely breathe. No, Junpei, no time to rest. Pull yourself together. You're almost there. All right. I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Yes. We're finally here. Please do. Sure, you look like a big heavy door. <laughs> okay, so it's a spiral stair, not a ladder. I work with what I have. <laughs> You're the only thing standing between me and my freedom. But even more important than that, you're the only thing standing between me and Akane. You can now open it, you're gonna open now! I felt a hand on my shoulder. As always, I gave it a small, reassuring squeeze. I'm so happy I felt like I could melt. My heart was at peace. Not only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective, all nine of us who had been kidnapped. Finally able to escape from the gigantic. On the distant horizon, we could see the faint outline of the ship as it sank. It gave a thunderous roar as it finally slipped beneath the waves. This last cry echoed out across the ocean. And then it was gone. It's over. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was over. It was finally over. It wasn't. Was it really? No. That was wrong. That wasn't it at all. I'm sure of it. This wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. Only a prologue to what would happen in nine years. Yes, finally, air. Yeah, damn, that sun is bright. I can barely see anything. I gotta admit, this doesn't look quite like... Wait. No way. You've got to be shitting me. What? It can't be. This is... Building Q in the Nevada desert. This is the building in the Nevada desert? The mock experiment building. Oh my god. This whole time we were in building Q. Sure enough. It's a desert out there. With mountains all around it. Hello there, son. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. I don't think I've ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Did I just hear something fall? Right. Our bracelets. I guess I've never really got a good look at the underside of one of these. Let's see what's inside you. Just a little electronic chip in an ATM card. Oh, neat. That's how Akane didn't spend $28 billion raising the gigantic. <laughs> That's it. There's nothing else. 
Nothing that even looks like a detonator. There was never a detonator to begin with. Figures. Akane. Jumpy! Guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice in the wind. There is our true ending. Actually, I shouldn't say that quite yet. There is a tiny post credit sequence, if I remember correctly. But yes. Otherwise, that's it. Again, I'm going to shut up because there is a... I'm not going to say anything else right now because we're not done yet. There's a post credit. There shouldn't be any, um, any puzzles. That last machine thing was the last thing I had to do. You know what, though? I will say, though, that was a perfect final puzzle for that game. That was awesome. And I'm actually... I think the Sudoku was kind of unusual, but I liked what they were able to do with it. With like, a, If you have never played the DS one, um, the... First of all, I think you should play one of these because it's awesome, but if you've never played the DS one and you only had a chance to experience the, uh, the one that they recently ported to the console, this one, or I think this is also available on Steam. Essentially what happened was you'd have to flip the DS upside down because you were looking at things from Akana's point of view. And it literally had like that face where Akana was making where she had both of her hands over the keyboard. That was uh, the face Akana was making when you had the D when you were looking at the DS. So you'd have Akana's face like that on one end and then on the flip side you'd have Junpei doing almost the exact same expression. And I thought that was a while the Sudoku was kind of a cheap puzzle to end it with, I thought that was a really neat imagery to go with it. Um, that, though, felt way the hell more climactic, and they tied it into the ending perfectly. Are you okay? But we have a little bit more stuff to go. So here we go. Oh, come on. Uh, this is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. It was just before the end of elementary school. Jumpy and I were sitting next to each other on a small hill, looking down at the town as the sun slowly set. How does it look, then? It was half serious and half joking. I thought about it for a minute first. Um, well, let's see. It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> What does that even mean? Junpei grinned and... Oh, ow, 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 ow. See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't beat five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do something. The Nevada desert will pass. An SUV, this thing is a pretty smooth ride. It was nice of someone to leave it for us outside the building. Easing the ignition and gas in the tank. Almost like it was a present, you know? Anyway, we jumped in and now here we are. Screaming across the desert. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Snake and Seven and I are all squeezed into the back seat here. I can't believe we let her drive. Woohoo! This is so fun! This is so awesome! Driving is so great when there's nothing around, and there's no speed limit! Clover, you crazy! Hey, uh, Clover, watch those bumps, alright? This car jumps even a little, and I think I'm gonna get crushed to death. Hey, shut it! I can't help if I'm big, alright? Suck it up! <laughs> Why don't you drive, Seven? I'm a cop. I ain't gonna break the law. 
He doesn't have an international license. Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no. There's no way I'm giving this seat up. <laughs> <clears throat> and Clover, there's no need to slow down. The car Santa and June are in should be somewhere down this road ahead of us. Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. There's no doubt about it. Then we've got to hurry if we want to catch them, don't we? Sure thing! Oh, shit! God damn it, she doesn't have to drive so fast! I didn't even think of Carl would go this fast. She was throwing up a lot of dust. of hours after we ran into the junior high students. They've been hiding in the bushes on the back of one of the hills, drenching a kitten in gasoline. The moment we saw what they were doing, Jumpy ran up to them, furious. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Then he jumped up. He quickly scooped up the kitten and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as I could. Help me! Officer, please! You have to come with me! The policeman and I headed back to the hill. All we found was Jumpy, sprawled on the ground with a face covered in big, swelling lumps. You couldn't run away after you threw the kitty to me? I asked him. He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where a tooth had fallen out. Yeah, I, I guess I could have. Then why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of what they were doing to the kitty. Yeah, that too, but I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester. Remember? Oh, you mean the bunnies. Yeah, the bunnies. He plucked some grass from the ground and tossed it into the wind. They asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told them. And then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did to the rabbits. I couldn't forgive him for that, so I... Hey, uh, there's still some stuff I don't get. Of course, they probably don't any know any more than I do. Like Ace. Well, I guess I should say Guitaro Hongo. Why did he create the Nonary Project? Anybody? Any ideas? Why don't you ask him yourself? Yeah, I guess I could. He's still in the trunk, I assume? Yeah, he is. Still tied up, I'm assuming, with his mouth taped shut. His eyes just look empty. No emotion. He looks like he's just given up. I wonder if he even cares what happens to him anymore. Hey, were you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you weren't, you little bastard. Get that tape on him. Come on, I know you were. Answer me. You'd at least look at me when you talk, man. I, I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. I thought... I thought if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, Perhaps I could see faces. What the absolute fuck of a reason is that? By peering into people's minds, you could understand how they were processing the expressions of others. That was your motivation? Yes! Yes! Narcissistic onto the amoral bastard portion of that. <laughs> that was the birds motive since Kakarot tr cried too loud. That's it? Yes. If you want to put it simply. Dude, you threatened to burn a fucking group of kids! No, that does not excuse you for shit! But if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, supply that as well. What fucking ego button pushing are you gonna have today? You see, the human collective consciousness... 
I think that's enough out of you. Time for the tape to go back on. All right. So what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? <laughs> Play a shrimp. <laughs> well, somebody's a little nosy. Well, my next question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. This is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well, see, nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic, I kept going after Hongo on my own. I'd catch up and finally slipped up. And during the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Bourdain and Alice. You're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut up, Hongo. Sounds like Hongo has something to say. All right, fine, I'll let you talk, but you gotta behave. What? <laughs> Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it but the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Madrigora, of the family Solanaceae. I was able to extract a particular alkaloid from it. I used that extract to create Soporin. Its creation was a tremendous boon to my firm, and we grew rapidly. And back goes the tape. <laughs> Go on forever. Dave's going back on, Hongo. The rest of my questions can wait. For now I think I'll just enjoy the ride. Here, uh, this is for you. What's this? This is a uh, for you doll. Uh, his name is Junpei. Junpei pulled something out of his pocket and shoved it out his arm toward me. And his hand was a doll made of yarn, small enough to fit in his palm. Chumpy, are you sure it's, uh, for you, doll? Huh? Uh, yeah, the, the lady at the shop said so, so that means it's for you, right? I, uh, are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? You managed to get in one more moment of dumbass, and I... Kinda have to respect that, Junpei. Wait, what? That, that's... Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sad I saw me woman didn't show up and, like, eat Acer <laughs> Cast Ice 9 or something. <laughs> yeah, Battle Ace in a Final Fantasy-style fight where you start summoning up all the... fucking crystals and shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll. I mean... You do know what a voodoo doll is used for, right? Yeah, I, I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea then. Why are you giving me this anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, well, um, you, you know how after June, um, we aren't gonna get to see each other too much? I mean, we're gonna be in different schools and... I just thought I'd, uh, you know, um... Okay, he's... Kind of a dork, and I kind of like him. Oh, okay. Well, how about we call it June, then? Okay. So, uh, I wanted to give you this. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. <laughs> uh, yes. I, head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. So I give this, it me, so we always together. Oh, Jumpy. If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here, take. I reached my hand out and picked up the doll gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Before I knew it, I was crying. Tears streamed down my face and fell into June's tiny yarn body. Oh, Chumpy, I'll never forget you. 
I promise. Jumpy looked straight into my eyes and said just five words. I'll never forget you either. The sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down toward the horizon. The last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hills. We sat, bathed in the warm light of evening. Just the two of us, leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set, and we still didn't move. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened, and one by one the lights of the town began to flicker on. Still one thing I don't care. To be honest, it's the biggest mystery as far as I'm concerned. I'm also the only one that's really important. Excuse me. God dang it, I hate this. I feel like I have to sneeze and it doesn't want to come out. <laughs> it has to do with June and Akane. Nine years ago, she died in the incinerator on the Gigante. She's still alive now. It's June. But how? It's because I tapped into the Morphic field set and saved her nine years ago. Huh. Alright. Let's say that makes some kind of insane sense. If I did that, then... How do I make sense of what Seven remembers? Snake makes sense. He's blind. He couldn't have seen her body anyway. Seven. He said he was sure he saw it. Does that mean there's some kind of historical discrepancy? Or... Wait. Maybe that's not it at all. There's one other logical explanation. Is what you told me the truth, Seven? You look... Satisfied. No way. He couldn't. Hey, look! Over there! There's somebody next to the road! Huh? What? Hmm? <laughs> oh Jesus, that caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> gaze of the Nevada sun pounded down on her head. The desert around her rippled with heat. Standing there on the shimmering plain was a woman, her arm out and a thumb up. It would not be long before Junpei realized who she was. Oh, really? You're going to leave us on that fucking cliffhanger? <laughs> <laughs> and a six sense of something. I can't read the full name of that, but oh my god. <laughs> they had to fucking pull out Alice at the end there. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god.
Oh my god. That's some fucking insanity right there, but oh my god. <laughs> yes. And there we go. That is all endings. That is all endings unlocked. Sub, safe, axe, knife, coffin, and finally, Yakane. <laughs> yeah! Ooh, I love that. <laughs> I finally got my Egyptianized zombie after all, didn't I? Yes, you did, XH. You managed to get your Egyptianized zombie. And you know what? She was looking pretty good, too. I'll admit that. <laughs> that that didn't show any effects of shit. So, uh... <laughs> oh, man. That was, that was a good one. Oh, God. That was... That was absolutely insane at the end there. But I'll admit it. I'll admit it. As insane as this got, I loved every moment of it. Um... In terms of weird puzzle styling games, um... I will admit that I liked um, Danganronpa just a little tiny bit more, if only because um, gameplay and dialogue moments were kind of mixed in a little bit better. There was a little bit more on the uh, gameplay puzzle side than there was on the just the dialogue and shit going down side. So I did appreciate... Danganronpa a little bit more for that. That being said, this one was a hell of a ride, and I did like it. As cheesy as it sometimes got, and as trippy as it sometimes got, I will admit I loved it the whole time. Like, even at its craziest moments, I still was totally into this, and I will completely admit that. And it it's awesome. I, I actually really did like this game. So, I'm so glad that I was actually finally able to experience it for myself. Again, as I said at the beginning of this, um, initially my first run was only just watching somebody else play through and get all the endings first. Um, and that was fun to watch, but it was better for, for me to have gone through and played this game at the end. Again, I want to laud that last puzzle. I did like the implication of it and the way that they were able to pull that off. Um, especially with the, uh, the stuff that you had to switch and there was the, um, the two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight and the final and like the eight things of the password and then the final one was nine. Like that to me was taking a puzzle that was um, well implemented in its image, if not its execution and changing it with one that actually did manage to get the execution right. Even if it was one of the simpler puzzles actually in the game, like really the only thing that I was like totally missing was, um, one little stupid clue that I could have, if I had been paying a little bit more attention to the way the puzzle was formatted, I might have gotten a little bit sooner. But honestly, the once the realization came about as to what that answer was, that was honestly, it, 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 it was an amazing moment. And I actually think that did definitely work better in terms of execution um, than the Sudoku puzzle that I remember that was in the original. So, yeah, that was actually a really, really good ending for this game. So, yes. Opinions on it? Kind of cheesy in places. A little bit confusing and trippy in others. But I absolutely enjoyed myself for the entire portion of it. So, you know what? I'd love it. I'd play through it again probably at some point in the future. And um, this is part of the Notary Games 2 set on the PlayStation 4 um, that comes with Virtue's Last Reward. Um, and I believe I can also get the final one, which I believe is called Zero Time Dilemma. Um, that may be way off in the future. I have so many games in the backlog. <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, yeah, I'll probably do Virtue's Last Reward at some point in the future. This was awesome. Um, from what I've seen, Virtue's Last Reward is a couple of uh, twists in the form... Oop. A couple of twists in the formula. Just about to drop my thing there for a moment. Um, but yeah, um, that was awesome and I loved it and it was great. And I am, I am totally pleased with this game. So I think that'll be, all these DS graphic adventures were batshit insane as they're writing. It's part of the charm. Absolutely. You know what? Yes. And I will also say that I've been, in uploading these to YouTube, it, it lists the date is two, it lists the year of the release is 2009. You know what? 11 years. Charm still holds up. 
we'll totally admit that. That was absolutely, it's still worth it. So, yeah. After 11 years, I'd say that's a pretty strong showing for a game if it's still after 11 years. It's as insane as it always was, but it still is as charming as it always was. Extra props to the game. So, yeah. Um, that is going to be all for right now. Uh, I will try and also do another sh uh, stream this week. It'll probably be East 8. Uh, but next week, at about the same time position, will be I will start Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex. Um, I didn't realize today would go so long, but I'm absolutely convinced it was worth it, my time. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, next week will be Crash, Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex, and yeah, that's all for right now. So, thank you to everybody who's watching. Thank you to XH for hanging out in the comment section, and I will see you all next time. Take care.